So if you don't want to be on camera, please don't, don't uh, turn your camera on. Um, other than that, we're happy to have you unmute and talk to us or turn your cameras on, particularly when we get back to a full discussion. Uh, but there will be uh, the opportunity for you to ask all your questions. Feel free to type in the chat box and uh, we'll make sure again that we're answering everything. Okay, so again, let's talk about how SEBS fits with human health. Um, one of the things that you're gonna find um, particularly important for any kind of health professions that you're thinking about is that there isn't necessarily one undergraduate major that goes to that area or that you need to take for that area. That's gonna be your graduate program. So one of the things you'll wanna start doing is thinking about what is the undergrad major or program that works best for you in terms of planning, in terms of giving you a strong background to, to move on to those health, um, human health professions types of areas. And we think certainly the SEBS majors are particularly connected. Um, what you'll find here is our 21 majors really do hit in four basic areas, all of which connect in interesting ways to human health. And we have a number of uh, majors that go into areas like biology, ecology, and the environment. And certainly for a lot of students, biological sciences is, is their planned major of choice because it does obviously map on to helping a student prepare for medical school or PA school. But we also think that there's a, 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 something to be said for looking at options like food, nutrition, and health. Certainly for um, anyone wanting to work holistically with patients to look at human health beyond just uh, medical conditions, but at how we sustain strong bodies for a longer time. Looking at our food science program, looking at nutrition, um, some of those areas can be really a strong background for you. Um, agriculture, you know, food and health um, connected across the planet really have so much to do with, with um, practicing in the health professions and keeping people um, well and moving forward. So some of our majors like the Ag and Food Systems will obviously connect with the broader view of how you, um, how you contribute to human health. And then finally, planning policy, economics, and design. You're going to find things like our public health major, which again, looks at human health in a way that's a little bit broader, that looks at how we educate people, how we you know, deal with things like a global pandemic, and really, again, have that long view of human health. And um, so you're dealing with both the clinical, the one-on-one, -on -one, but also that broader view of how that connects with, with our society. As I said, we have 21 majors. We've tried to break them into those four areas just to give you a sense of things you might consider. Um, so keep in mind that you might be an exercise science major. You might think about biotechnology or microbiology. All of these majors um, contribute different pieces that I think would be very strong foundations for you to then build on in a PA program, PT program, or what have you. Most of our majors have the same science core that you, you'll need to have to apply. So for most of you, that would be your general biology, your general chemistry, your organic chemistry, physics. And one of the things I like to promote about SEBS is that we are a really great undecided science place. So you may be somebody who's interested in science or interested in health professions, but you don't necessarily know how that's going to play out. We can be a really nice option because so many of our different majors are going to have that same core. So you come in, you start taking your core sciences, but you leave space to discover where that will go for you, whether that would mean being a microbiology major or a plant biology major and still connect um, with say a medical program or a PA program. Um, again, the biosci major and uh, Dean Ventola is one of our main biosci advisors. He, he's gonna help us think about that as a major. But I always like particularly pre-med and pre-health professional students to recognize that the, the schools really do value a strong science curriculum, a strong science background in many different aspects. All right, so here in New Brunswick, we have, we're lucky enough to have a health professions office. Um, health professions office deals with advising and structure for students going into pretty much all of the allied health professions. So allopathic and osteopathic medical school, dental school, optometry, podiatry, chiropractic programs and physician assistant programs. We also have students who do other allied health areas like uh, physical therapy, um, occupational therapy, speech language pathology. They work in some ways with the health professions office, but, but uh, not quite as deep and not quite as long as students planning for any of these health professions. 
our office helps students with all of the pieces um, in terms of getting their plans and their application together. So that would be things like starting to figure out where you're going to volunteer, do shadowing, when you're going to take the required um, exams. Um, Daniel mentioned taking a uh, practice MCAT. So you'll be working with advisors at the HPO to talk about when should you be preparing, when will you have the coursework done um, to make the application that you're looking for, keeping your letters of recommendation together, thinking about who you might ask for letters of recommendation, even down to the what schools might you apply to. And this is particularly important, I think, for those of you who know that you want to work with uh, people, know that human health and that clinical aspect is really important to you. But again, maybe you don't know how that will be. Maybe you're thinking that might be PA, but it could potentially be as a nurse practitioner. It could potentially be as, a, as a, an orthopedic surgeon. You know, so this office is particularly important for helping you work through those. So you'll meet with advisors at the HBO, hopefully once a semester, once you're here and make those long-term plans. Let's talk a little bit about admission stats because that's always a big question for students. I pulled some admission stats from a couple of years back from the health professions um, office. And if you go to the hpo.rectors.edu site, it will give you um, obviously these, this screen capture, but then other information about students um, that we've had who have successfully um, applied to and been admitted primarily to medical schools and dental schools. So if you take a look here um, on the left hand side, you've got US medical school applications. What we've done here is in the admission statistic, given you an overview of total applicants, but then we break them down to, into two particularly important um, categories, basically. Um, one of them, basically, we, we looked at applicants who have a strong GPA, who um, have a competitive MCAT score. You know, so if you look at students who um, are in good GPA 3.5 to 4.0, we have a 66% acceptance rate. Students who have a BCPM, so that's your, bio, that's your biology, chemistry, physics, and math GPA, which is higher, we've got about a 74% um, acceptance rate. So we look at those because we know that those students have the criteria to be admitted to medical school. That's a strong rate. Our students go all over the country, so you're going to find Rutgers students primarily on the East Coast, um, mostly because that's where our students apply, but all through the country at different allopathic and osteopathic schools. On the right-hand side, you'll see um, the 2019 dental school application, applicant admission stats. Again, total overall, everyone who applied and was accepted or applied, we had about a 72% acceptance rate. And then if you look at the two criteria, students in the 3.2 to 4.0 GPA range and have an 89% acceptance rate and in the much higher 3.5 to 4.0 and 94% acceptance rate. So we're successful getting students into the health professional areas. Um, always, again, I think planning and early conversations are really key to that, to, to being in one of those strong applicant pools. The other piece I like to talk about early on for students who are looking at going into any of the medical professions is thinking about core competencies. Um, anybody who needs to work clinically with patients needs to be strong in a lot of different components. Some of these things are ones that you're going to get in the classroom. So um, within the sciences, an understanding of living, living systems, an understanding of human behavior, the uh, thinking and reasoning, your critical thinking skills, your quantitative skills, scientific inquiry, written communication. A lot of those pieces you're going to demonstrate by strong grades in classes, by strong letters of recommendation from your faculty. But a number of these areas are the ones that I think um, are the outside the classroom types of skills, your intra, inter and intrapersonal skills. So uh, what you're thinking about ethics, what your ethical responsibility to your patients would be, reliability and dependability, resilience and adaptability, capacity to improve. Um, maybe that means you know, demonstrating that you've struggled with something and how you overcame that. Um, interpersonal, you know, again and again, the students who are interested in health professions say to me, I want to help others. That's just, that's the key to who I am and where I want to go. So part of what you'll be doing at Rutgers is showing, how does that manifest itself? Are you working in student groups, um, helping others? Are you going on medical brigades? What types of, how does that really come out? Um, and how, how do you make that real as part of your education? Now, your social skills, cultural competence, teamwork, world communication, you're going to show a lot of those pieces in the experiences you have at Rutgers. 
And one of those main experiences is we do like to talk a lot about our extracurricular activities. You're gonna do a lot of work in the classroom with a strong science core, but a lot of room outside of the classroom. And Rutgers you know, features 650 uh, more clubs and activities um, of all different sorts. You're going to find things like our SEBS Pre-Med Pre-Dental Society, American Medical Students Association at Rutgers, you're gonna find the Health Professions Club, we have an, a pre-professional honor society, um, Alpha Epsilon Delta. But beyond that, you're going to find also service activities, leadership activities, medical brigades, and even um, times and, and areas that aren't necessarily about medicine, but that are going to help you work on your leadership and on your service. And when we do get, when I get to introduce you to the students, we're going to have them tell you about all the things they're involved in, which is a, an impressive list. And we'll give you a sense of, of why Rutgers is a good place for you to do the things um, outside the classroom that really interest you. The other piece that's really critical for health professions is having some hands-on research work. A number of our lab, a number of our majors require research. So if you become a biochemistry major, you'll need to do research. Um, our at SEBS, we have a requirement for um, experience-based education. And we're pretty proud of that because what it does is it asks you to think about your education in the classroom, but then extend it outside, extend it to, um, again, research, internship, study abroad, something where you make the things that you're learning in the classroom connect with the larger world. We've, I put up a few of the different lab options here and our students typically do labs, uh, do lab work and research across New Brunswick, certainly with our faculty, but then with faculty at the other schools at Robert Wood Johnson Medical School. So if you are someone who's interested in, in bench research, and we do recommend that you do some form of research during your time at Rutgers, you'll have a number of interesting opportunities across areas. The other thing that I feel the need to always mention to students is that research itself doesn't only have to be about bench research in something that feels just within clinical medicine. So you may find that you're doing something in the athlete health and neuroscience lab or in another one of the labs that'll help you really appreciate scientific inquiry, but you know, won't necessarily be just about say your future as an oncologist or your future um, working in cell bio and neuroscience. All right, so let's get to know our students a little bit better just so you know who they are to ask more questions. Um, first, Blanca Soto Gomez. Um, Blanca is a kinesiology and health um, uh, major, class of 2022. Um, she has a pet hedgehog who, who I would hope may make an appearance, but probably won't. Um, but let me have her say hello again and tell her a little bit more about, um, tell, tell you a little bit more about her background here and where she's going and certainly clubs and activities. Yes, hello everybody. Hi again. Um, so yeah, I'm currently a third year um, in the exercise science major, kinesiology, um, interchangeable. Um, and yeah, I was so excited to get involved once I got on campus. Um, we have like an involvement fair and it's like showcasing every club and organization that's on campus. And I just, I joined everything. <laughs> And I find myself in spaces um, being a leader, but also learning just a lot from um, peers, from mentors. Um, peer mentors is what's offered throughout um, programs. Um, and you can just find mentors in any um, peer that you make at subs, at any class that you find yourself in. Um, so yeah, and um, there's so many opportunities and I feel like it's just networking, um, doing research. Um, just checking around, you know, I did the first year fellowship program and I really recommend that to everybody um, because it showed me the different clubs, um, it arranged, like the range is just, <laughs> Rutgers is huge. There's no words to describe how huge Rutgers is. Um, but yeah, I, community service, you can find yourself doing community service just about anywhere. I found myself um, in a course called Movement for, um, Movement Experiences for Individuals with Disabilities. Um, and we had the opportunity to connect with um, Special Olympics of New Jersey and have that volunteer opportunity even virtually. And I'd be more excited to do that in person. Um, so that's just through a course, you know, um, and I feel like connecting with the professors is really important because you just never know who you meet and where they can lead you or help you down in your career development. Um, 
And yeah, I, I love experiencing different things almost every semester. And um, I've been a student ambassador since my freshman year. Um, and so if you guys have any questions at all, I'm free to answer them in the chat um, right now, later, I can give my contact information later. Um, but yeah, I currently, I'm president of Community Students Involved in Education, which is out of my SEBS EOF program. Um, but it is under SEBS and we try and connect students um, just so we can grow together throughout the semesters and support each other. And I find that really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great, thank you. And I hope we will get back to you on some of those. Hope the students will have some great questions. Um, and then let's go, let's back, uh, jump back to Dan. Um, his major is in biological sciences, um, class of 2021. So staring down graduation very soon. Uh, so Dan, tell us a little bit about your experience. Uh, hi everybody. Um, yeah, just to kind of like highlight what was previously said, there's just so many opportunities at Rutgers. Um, so my sophomore year, I started doing research in a lab for microbiology. And we focused on like the gut microbiota and its implications for uh, gut diseases like diabetes or Crohn's disease. Um, unfortunately, because of the pandemic, um, I wasn't able to return to the lab. But the cool thing about Rutgers is there's always something else for you. If some of you might have heard about that. So I sent an email to the starting uh, company asking if I could help out and I didn't get a response. And so I emailed them a week later and they were like, sorry, we're just so busy. Like, yes, please come, we need your help. So I've been working there ever since. Um, so that's kind of, it started off working with Rutgers and then it kind of merged into its own company. So I've been working there for a while and it's a great experience being on part of a team that's really at the forefront of the COVID response. So I think that just goes to show you that um, there's just so much to do at uh, Rutgers. And then in terms of clubs, I'm part of Phi Delta Epsilon, which is, uh, it's a pre-med fraternity. So we have a lot of fun. We have a lot of help in terms of classes. It's a great opportunity because you really get a tight knit bond with your brothers. So all of my brothers have helped me pick classes, um, help studying and orgo, giving what professors to go with. Um, and I've kind of done the same now that I'm graduating. So there's just a ton of organizations and opportunities for help students at Rutgers. Great, thanks. Let's see here. I wanted to jump to the connect with us, but I did want to talk a little bit about, I know we had, uh, when we asked you about your interests um, early on, we had a good number of students interested in the physician assistant program. So I did want to mention there are two ways to do physician assistant. The, the one that's been probably the most common are students um, going through, they do four years at Rutgers and then they do a three-year graduate program. That's the fairly standard seven years for PA programs. Um, for that one, again, students can major in anything they'd like. I've had students major in bio, in public health, in psychology. So one, again, one of the things you'll need to do is have a strong core in your sciences, but you have a lot of ability to move around and see what other kind of major might interest you. Rutgers does also have a three plus three program, so it's an accelerated PA program. For that one, students apply at the end of their sophomore year. Um, it is accelerated, so it doesn't mean at that point you need to be through bio and chem um, and well on to the rest of the bio major. That program really does have to be done with the bio major. Students apply at the end of that sophomore year. Uh, currently, it's only offered to SAS students, but sub students who have an interest in it generally start with us, get the courses started, and then when they apply to the program, they simultaneously apply to SAS, so that if they're, if they're admitted to the program, they transfer over. If they're not admitted to the program, they generally stay with us, finish up their major with us, and then apply the standard way into a regular graduate program for PA. So I like to kind of talk a little bit about those options. There's also three accelerated programs um, for health professions. There's two accelerated BAMD programs with Robert Wood Johnson and with New Jersey Medical School. Those similarly, you apply after your second year at Rutgers. So you've got two years of coursework. Then um, if you're admitted, you finish your coursework in uh, your junior year, your third year, and go right into the medical program. So instead of your standard four years undergrad, four years in medical or dental school, you're doing three years and then four more at the medical school or the dental school. The dental program uh, with, uh, with Rutgers Dental School is the same type of structure. 
So we don't have, in here in New Brunswick, we don't have a program that you're admitted to immediately on coming into school, but we do ask you to do those core sciences across the first two years and then apply for any of those particular programs. Um, I'd like to, well, I haven't been able to see what kinds of questions and things we have. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and shift us out of the share and then see um, if Dean Ventola would want to jump in to tell us a little bit about the bio major and about options you have there and our shared major with SAS and SEBS. Dean Ventola? Yeah, th th thank you, Dean Traxler. Yes, um, uh, SEBS has the, the biological sciences major, and so does uh, SAS. I'll tell you about the difference in just a little bit. But biology is one of those majors where you could do so many different things with. And there's a, a number of the, after you take your main science courses, biology and chemistry, organic chemistry and physics, then you can go on to take a, a, a number of different courses in cell biology, ecology, biochemistry, genetics, biotechnology, marine science, so forth and so on. So it, it's kind of a major where you can kind of pick and choose what your direction is and what your passions are. And this is why the major is so popular, quite frankly. It's always typically in the top three enrollments at Rutgers University. And uh, sometimes it's a major where students are not quite sure what science to go into, the, the biology is the perfect uh, place. Or you may have a student, you might come in as biology, and then you find out more about biotechnology and you can easily make that shift because you have the same, the same core sciences. As Dean Traxler has said, one of our unique and tremendous gems for our school is that every single student has to do some type of experience base in their field of study. So for biology, we have quite an extensive list from our George H. Cook Scholars Program to internships. We have a SPIN program. We have students do internships at the, uh, from career services as well. Practicums, um, there's a whole host of areas. And as um, uh, Dan made a tremendous point that how things are created is you, some, you, you can reach out to professors and staff and things and, it's, it becomes pretty pretty simplistic to how you can get your certain areas with research within, you know, within at Rutgers. So that is one of the differences between the two schools, between the School of Arts and Sciences and the School of SEBS, is that the school requirements are a bit a little bit different. And one of the differences is that you have to do an experience base at at uh, at, S, at 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 SEBS. Let me emphasize because I probably have questions on this, just to be very clear, the major itself in biology, the major itself in SAS and SEBS is, are exactly the same. There's no difference of the classes. Students take the same exact courses. You could be in the same course with an SAS student and, a, and an SEBS student. They're the same exact uh, core courses. You get an advised, uh, one of the bio advisors at, at the school for SEBS, our, our, our process is that every single student gets also a first year advisor, which is kind of a neat thing too, because you'll get that, that very first help within your, in your area of study. So I think I covered everything. I'll be happy to entertain any questions, uh, you know, uh, if you want to unmic or if you want to send it in the chat, I'll be happy to help anything at all. But thank you. It was answered in the chat, so thanks to our students, but the, it is important for me to make the, the note that the Health Professions Office serves students university-wide in New Brunswick, so um, I'm a, an advisor at the Health Professions Office, which means I see SEB students, I see SAS students, I see engineering students, I'll see the occasional graduate student, so the HBO and all of its resources are open for all of our students who are thinking about uh, one form of, of health profession or another. We are happy to take other questions. We know that Rutgers can be a little bit of a uh, kind of confusing place, or again, you may want to hear more about any of the opportunities that we've mentioned. Um, I'm happy to have you put them in the chat, happy to have you unmute and ask us a question. Uh, I just want to share that if you are uh, thinking about pre-health and like the medical field, um, 
that you you try and look for experience as early as possible um just because like your academic workload will require like full attention sometimes during the semester and you are able to do research and work at the same time um i've seen people do all three and uh i just feel like when applying into like the medical schools and the medical programs pre-health they do want to see that you're well-rounded but that you're experienced and of course it was mentioned that SEBS do, does require us to have um an internship or experience-based um like semesters worth of experience um but yeah i have seen a lot of some of my friends at least that have been successful um start their internships just like within summers sometimes they um do it in the winter whatever free time they're able to uh, fill that in um and yeah i'd be happy to answer any questions about like internships with like physical therapy um i've also worked with occupational therapists and chiropractors i think that's a great point and i think often again if you're a student coming in thinking you want to do something in the health professions but you're not entirely sure what that might be those experiences and that volunteer work and that service work is is incredible for helping you make those decisions. Seeing what healthcare is like on a daily basis right there, that's really what's going to help you narrow down, get the experience that you need. Uh, we do have a question in the chat for the students. Um, what's something you wish you knew when you were a freshman in terms of getting internships and experiences? We could go back and tell you now. Uh, I can answer that. Um, I would say first that, I mean, I get, you'll see this a lot. I definitely wish I reached out my freshman year for research. Um, I reached out my sophomore year just through the ARESP program because it was very streamlined. But um, I kind of, looking back, it's kind of like the worst thing that would happen is they would say no. So, I mean, I feel like either way, if I emailed a bunch of professors and nothing happened, it still would have been the same result. Um, so that's one thing I would say about research. And you'll find that in general. Um, it can be a, a very intimidating, so that was the reason why. And then um, secondly, I would say I wish I did more clinical volunteering at Robert Wood Johnson, especially now because of the pandemic. Now you're looking back and you're like, oh, I wish I did a little more. I did one semester uh, my sophomore year as well, but unfortunately, then the pandemic happened. So in your case, it might be a little different when you apply to Rutgers or when you get into Rutgers, but those what I would say in terms of experiences. It's a hard time right now. Um, certainly the pandemic has made it harder for our students to, to get out. So as soon as you can safely go back, whether you're looking at volunteer experience in local hospital, clinic, uh, rehab facility, EMT work, those types of things are really going to be the things that unlock your, your thinking about, um, about your medical career. There's a question about how easy are for sub students to take classes at other colleges across Rutgers. I'm assuming you mean New Brunswick. Um, I can certainly tell you that our students take class, take courses across the schools all the time. Um, some limitations, certainly on, on areas in pharmacy or some of the upper upper level courses in some of the majors that aren't our majors. But it's a normal day, I think, and a normal semester for our students to take courses across New Brunswick. Not sure if um, you guys want to weigh in on some courses you've taken or other areas you've studied. Um, students already know that I put in a huge plug for the fact that our students can do minors and certificates across New Brunswick. So maybe you'll do the bio side major with SEBS and maybe you'll think about taking a minor like a sustainability minor at SEBS, but maybe you're interested in a psychology minor or a music minor. Our students can uh, take advantage of any of the minor and certificate programs offered across any of the New Brunswick schools. But let me stop talking and throw it to our students to tell us more. Okay, we got a question about, is there a campus that's um, better to dorm at for biology major? I would say no. I, I think, you know, I, I think with campuses, come and have a look around campus and see what looks the nicest to you. I mean, some, some students like the whole vibe of, of the kind of cottagey feel over at Livingston. I like the natural environment that we have at SEBS and a lot of students like the more kind of natural landscape that we have at SEBS. And then I feel like SAS, that's kind of the city environment. 
So it's where you fit in. But biology classes, for example, would be offered on every single campus. So even though it's taught by SAS, there's going to be a general biology offered on the SEBS campus. There's going to be a general biology offered on the SAS campus. There's going to be some offered over at Livingston. If you get to um, majors, because you know you don't want to just look at biology as a major. Uh, most of our science majors are going to kind of bake in those core science courses that you need for most health, health profession majors, including things like plant science or animal science. And if you're going to major in one of our majors, um, then any class that's taught by SEBS faculty will be on the Cook Douglas campus. Right, so a lot of your upper levels really are going to end up being focused more on Cook Douglas. Can I ask our students where they lived in their times at Rutgers? Is there a best campus? Yeah, sure. Um, I lived on Cook um, for my years. Um, I would say biology is one of those majors that it really doesn't matter just because you'll have classes at many different locations. Um, something like maybe if you were in the Mason Gross School of the Arts, you probably would. Most of your classes would be on Cook. But um, for biology, you'll have definitely classes on Bush, definitely classes on Cook. Um, so I would say the advantage of that is that your freshman year, you don't really have too much pressure to choose one location. Uh, if you choose one location and you decide that that feels not for you, um, next year you can choose to live somewhere else. How about you, Blanca, any favorites? Uh, yeah, I honestly uh, lived on Cook for the past two years and I'm Cook on um, off campus right now, but still Cook um, and I <laughs> love it. Um, College Avenue is like, if you really like the city life, I'm personally a city girl, I'm really close to New York City. Um, but it's honestly really cool to have like a calm setting um, to study during the semester. And I agree like with the classes, like it's not even um, just biology, like your chemistry labs, um, your physics labs, like they are, they are taught in um, all the different campuses. So the location um, is not too crazy. Uh, and of course we have like transportation to get between the campuses as well. Um, and for Ariana, you asked um, if you can apply to multiple research programs at a time. Um, yes, and I, I like recommend that you do because then you get to choose like, you should be planning um, probably a semester ahead of what you want to do, like your summer plans. Um, sometimes even research programs have it for like a year beforehand for like an application process. Um, and you should, you, you should seek like different opportunities, um, apply at once, see who accepts you, see what they offer you, um, see if it's like what you're looking for, of course, um, and go about it that way. Well, you'll find that summer, uh, the summer that you're a rising sophomore, so the summer between your first year and your second is always a really good time to be targeting getting into some research, whether it's on campus at Rutgers or potentially through um, another school or a national program like something with the NIH. A lot of those applications come together or you start to put them together in January or February. So we always recommend, um, as Blanca said, that you get multiple ones out there just so that you have a better opportunity of, for getting into a number of them, for weighing whether how they're going to help you think about your future or the experience that you'll get. So some of you may find that you're looking outside Rutgers for some of those experiences as, as well over those breaks. Happy to keep taking more questions. Happy to also have the panelists weigh in. I think I, what happens with a number of students, especially the students on the panel kind of comment on this is that um, a number of our students do more than one opportunity. And um, they may work maybe at a small company outside of Rutgers, or they might work with a professor in research within Rutgers. Uh, but that is one of the big advantages of our, our school and I would say in SCBS is that it's a small school within this large Rutgers. And that's that's what students love is that they're going to they get a very close to the faculty and, and the staff. It does become a pretty it's, a, it's actually a very strong community. And so you're going to be able to have that. And also all of the all of the tremendous things that Rutgers offers. So it's, um, you know, a small school, but, you know, using it, all the things that Rutgers offers as a big university. So, and, you know, again, a number of our students do a few things and they come back and they say, I like this better. I, I don't like this. I like this. 
it's the perfect time to know what you like or don't like while you're still in school. So all these are, are all good starting places for your career and great things for your resume. And so there's a, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of positives in the in, in sense of what's being offered. I think the other thing that um, Rutgers really has, has a, a great, just a fantastic, diverse number of clubs and organizations. So you have clubs and organizations that are gonna help you get into med school. There's a pre-med club, there's a pre-vet club. I don't know whether there's a pre-physician's assistant club, but I wouldn't be surprised. And, and they'll help you navigate um, what you need to do to, to get into schools. But then there's all kinds of fun clubs and organizations. There's a hiking club, there's a Quidditch club. Um, I guess, the, Quidditch is a big thing where you run around with a, play basically soccer with a broomstick between your legs. So that's kind of fun. Um, just about any kind of club or organization that you can imagine, um, there's, there's going to be something for you at, at Rutgers. And if there's a club that you don't have and you have enough, can get enough people together, uh, you can get funding for it and get it approved and start your own club. That's true. That's true. A few years back when Fortnite was all the rage, there was suddenly the need for a Fortnite club. So, <laughs> so if now if it's around me or something else new that I'm not up on, maybe you'll be the one to come in and, and create that new club. But the pre-med and the pre-vet clubs and a lot of the pre-professionals, pre-dental, uh, those clubs are really very useful in that they'll get speakers in. Uh, often Rutgers students are now in the profession. Uh, and then they'll have all kinds of things that'll help you navigate the system and, and help you get into whatever profession you're trying to get into. We have a question about the sort of the SEBs have a core curriculum and if so, what types of classes? Um, we do in fact have a core curriculum. So our students who uh, are graduates have to complete a SEBS major. Um, 120 total credits and a set of our core curriculum, um, which is a series of courses in different areas. So we require a couple courses in what we call contemporary challenges areas, one of which is a diversities course, a couple natural science courses, uh, courses in historical and social analysis, um, arts and humanities, because we do want you to be a little bit well-rounded, uh, courses in writing and in quantitative or mathematical statistics based. Um, so there's a good number that overlap with most of our majors and minors, but we do like you to take advantage of the fact that at, as a student at Rutgers, you have access to courses in you know, so many different areas that, that really can just help you round out your education, that help, can help you in the future. You, know, you may take a course like a biomedical ethics course in the philosophy department. Um, that's an arts and humanities type course. But it's also a huge help for you if you are anticipating going on and, and doing your medical school interview. Um, so some of these things will be for fun and some of them um, will be for your long-term plans, but many can then overlap into our core. Uh, Laura Mitchell put in the chat the link to our course, so it will give you a sense of the courses. And I did mention, again, we require the core and the major within the 120. Many of you may decide to do more than that. And that's where I do recommend that if you have other interests, you start to take some courses in those early. So you could uh, figure out where a minor might be or some additional coursework but that really feels like, again, it's going to give you a nice balance. I've worked with pre-med students who were dance minors, who were computer science minors. Um, so that's really nice too, because it just gives you additional areas that you know about, about the world. Let's see. Oh, wow, where can I go to join the club? Thanks, Blanca. The Get Involved site is a great way to do some browsing for the clubs at Rutgers. Um, and how do you become a student ambassador? Oh my goodness, okay. How did, you, how did we press you both into service as our student ambassadors? Uh, yeah, I think when, when I joined, um, it was kind of like first filling out an initial Google form, um, just talking about your interest and what, um, you could bring to the table. And then I think it was just a short interview. I don't think it was anything major or at all. Um, so yeah, I would definitely encourage you to look for that if you do choose to go to Rutgers. Yeah, well, oh, I, 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 sorry. I, I just also want to mention what I just saw, what does the job entail? 
So there's a lot of things uh, you can do. Um, the, what we're doing is kind of like a tour ish in a sense. Um, so there's tours. You can also um, do like a spend a day with the student. So that's before when we have more in person things. Um, you could join a student and a prospective, uh, like a high school student, and they would kind of shadow you throughout the day. So there's a lot of things. Yeah, and of course, um, there is an application interview process um, because they do want to see that you have like a leadership skill, or you um, have a lot of ambition to be a leader for SEBS. Um, and I absolutely love sharing my own narrative in my campus. Um, so you get to do that and it's pretty cool. Yep, and as you guess, we, we uh, adore them and are so thankful that they're on our campus and part of our community and happy to, to spend some time chatting with people like you um, who are looking at Rutgers and making your decision. I did notice earlier we had someone who was interested in nutrition, um, and I realized I was remiss in not talking about the fact that we do have a dietetics program, a uh, net nutrition major that students can then do the dietetics uh, internship for the um, RD degree. So if you do have an interest in that, our nutrition program actually has five different tracks, but the dietetics is probably the most popular. I don't know if I can bear that out, but I know that that's certainly a nice one to put you on the track if you're already planning to, to work in that nutrition area. Other questions we can help with, ideas? Do the other track? Oh, one of the other tracks I can explore. I'm not sure you mean within majors or within nutrition. Oh, for Ariana, nutrition. Oh, sorry. I was going to add, oh. sir, um, Ariana, on the EOF program question. Um, mm -hmm. So for EOF, there's two courses, that one that you take in the fall semester once you come in and one in the spring. Um, and... That's pretty much it, but you're gonna love UOF. I am so like happy to be um, like still very active in my community in my class, um, just cause like I plan to come back and give back to Rutgers, you know? Um, and it's pretty cool to have a support system like UOF, um, but the advisors there are just as helpful as any um, undergraduate academic advisor. You know, like they worked with students before, just like you that have been like lost, don't know what to do, don't know what classes to take. Um, so definitely keep in touch with your advisors. Well, there are five tracks for nutrition. There's a dietetics option, there's a nutrition option, community nutrition, food service administration, and nutrition, food, and business. Each, um, each have a set of courses that, um, that are across all five, but then they do delve into those different areas. So you'll come in and take some intro courses and that will help you focus um, your interest in nutrition and see which of those paths is going to be a better one for you. I don't know that program as well. I don't know, Dean Carlson, if you know the nutrition program. Well, I mean, you know, the nutrition program itself. So the dietetics program is going to do some of the one semester, well, both, everybody needs to do biology and chemistry, right? But you have um, a one semester organic or you have a two semester organic. You have a one se semester biochemistry or you have a two semester biochemistry. So the dietetics basically does those one semester courses like biochem um, and, and organic chem. N nutritional science would actually be a fine pre-med track. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to get really all the courses that you would need to get in, you know, for, for medical school. And I always tell students, if you want to be pre-med, you know, look at some of these other majors because they might give you a specialization. You know, whenever you're doing something that's as tough to get into as medical school, you want a backup plan. So, you know, if you're biology, no offense to Joe, but biology, there's a million students out there uh, with biology degrees trying to get jobs. And a nutrition major, for example, would have the same basic course science courses as a biology major and could probably do most things a biology major could do, but then they've got some specializations in, in the nutritional sciences that are gonna make them uniquely qualified for some jobs. Or, you know, now gut bacteria is a big thing that people are looking at, you know, and, and we do have some people in our 
nutritional science department that's looking at that. And that's a, a you know, field you could go into for med school. And animal, sci animal science or plant science, the, um, there are options that are gonna get all the courses you need to get in for med school or a physician's assistant program or something like that. So, you know, look at some of these majors too. Ah, uh, when did you start preparing for MCAT and how did you study for it? How actually we should say, are you studying right now for it? You wanna tell us about that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, there's a ton of information on it. You know, when you dedicate your life basically to a test like this, you could talk about it forever. Um, to kind of bring rockers into it, um, right now I'm taking a course through ODASIS, which is, um, it's a program that helps uh, certain groups like succeed in uh, STEM and medicine. And basically it's a free course. It counts as a three credit course and you get access to three or uh, four tutors for each of the four sections. And um, so it's great because it's basically what you'd pay if you paid like the Princeton Review a thousand dollars for one of their like self prep courses. Um, and not only that, but they also, they're easy about it, but they also grade you on completion and participation. So it really encourages you to do the full length exams. Um, so yeah, I started, I mean, technically I started in January, but I didn't like actually start until more like February, but um, the course definitely helped me because you have to buy the exams and the Princeton Review books, but they offer you a really large discount since it's a group. And um, it's just very helpful because it's a class at Rutgers that you take, but it also prepares you for the exam as well. I always like to point out to new students that, that in your first in intro courses, your general bios, your general chems, that you're studying for the MCAT just in focusing really well on those courses. Make sure you know that material, make sure that you understand foundationally how all of that fits together. So once you've taken all of those, like as you're taking those, you're already studying. So you don't have to be stressed out that you have to formally start studying for MCATs the minute you hit college. So you have some time, but the work you put in early on in those core courses is going to be really important for your MCAT preparation. Now, and it's also going to be important, you know, doing well in general chemistry is going to have an impact on how you do in organic chemistry and then how you do in biochemistry. So always make sure then in thinking about your, your education that you don't think of it as just a checkbox. You're not just getting through courses to check them off. You're getting through courses to really master that material, understand it, be able to build on it, and then use it at a higher level. Um, and that, that takes a little bit of a shift sometimes uh, to really think about strongly you know, mastering information and not just passing courses and moving on. Yeah, and then, um, you know, students ask about the pre-med track, the pre-dental track. You know, it, it's important to realize that pre-med's not a major, pre-dental isn't a major. Um, there are certain courses, you, and I, I, I sent out a link to an, partially answer that question. There are certain courses that you're going to have to take uh, to get into dental school or medical school. And you might even want to research specific dental or medical schools that you're thinking about applying to because they, you know, some medical schools might want you to take a sociology course or some may not. So you may want to research specific medical and dental schools too. Um, but you could major in economics and still go to med school or dental school. You just have to take organic chemistry and physics and biology and chemistry along with the economics courses. Um, the nice thing about most of our life science majors, biology is probably the most popular pre-med, pre-dental major, but lots of our other ones is that they've got those um, basic requirements baked into the major. You can, one thing too is you, when you're picking Rutgers or SEBS or another school at Rutgers, you're actually picking well over 100 majors. So for instance, it may happen a student might start off at SAS or start off at SEBS and then they get a change of heart along the way and they want to become a food science major or they want to become a history major. So you can um, pretty easily do a school to school transfer to a different school within Rutgers and you know, and all those credits that you have, you're not going to lose them if you transfer at Rutgers. That you'll you'll continue on 
and have those credits count towards your degree. And as my colleagues have said, there's a lot of majors that, that are for pre-med. It, does, it doesn't have to be biology. There's a lot of overlap there. There's a lot of classes that overlap within the, the electives, but it can be any major. And the truth is you, sh you should pick your major based on your pure interest and your goals, even outside of medical school. It's not about picking a major for medical school, pick the major that really suits you. And then within that, that can, can become a, a pre-med major. Uh, but you're gonna get a lot of help here. We like to see our students. We are very supportive. We love to see when they succeed or two of our really good students with us today. Uh, you know, and, and you're gonna, you're, you're gonna be able to be assisted in every part of the process. As I think uh, Traxler has said, your, your application for medical school really starts with your very first day at Rutgers and your very first quiz and your very first assignment. That's your application that goes from semester to semester, assignment to assignment. And we'll help you through that. And, you know, we're here for you and we, you know, would love to see you come in, 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 in the fall. <laughs> There's a question about letters of recommendation in the chat. I will say for uh, pre-med, pre-dent programs, the HPO, the Health Professions Office, we, re we, re we try to um, have students get five to six letters of recommendation over the course of their time at Rutgers. So those come from a wide variety of people. You know, obviously you're gonna want them from um, your faculty, but often you really wanna get them from people who have gotten to know you in the classroom. So that could be a TA or a lab instructor. Um, often maybe that's someone who's a, a professor outside the sciences. I've had students um, say take Spanish courses and do some really good work in other areas. Those are great letters to get because those people can speak to how you are as a student, how you um, deal with kind of concern about how to learn, you know, really how you approach teamwork in the classroom, really kind of who you are in the classroom. Um, certainly doctors you've shadowed, Blanca put some really good options there. Sometimes some programs do want specific letters. Um, osteopathic medicine medical programs really do like to see a, a letter from a DO so that you can really show that you understand that holistic focus, that, that, uh, that the philosophy behind osteopathic medicine is something that you're really understanding. So that is one of the things that we'll have you plan to do is see advisors, make sure that you're getting that guidance so that you can plan out that long-term and know who you might ask for letters of recommendation. I think even the sometimes advisors, you know, certainly like a situation where you've worked with the same advisor for a long time, that person can really speak to who you are and your preparation for medical programs. I write a good number of letters for students I work with um, and I'm not a doctor. Well, I'm not that kind of a doctor. And I still can really talk about how I think a student embodies, you know, these qualities that will make them a really strong um, health professional. All right, I think we're just about time. Um, so I do want to kind of remind you that if you have questions after today, we'd be happy to, uh, to kind of check in with you, answer any other questions. I'm going to put the perspective at Seb's email in the chat. Um, feel free to follow up with any of us. Um, let us know. You know. We can always forward along questions if you have a question for one of the student panelists. Um, you know, but we want to make sure that, that you understand that there are some really great health professional options and sciences at SEBS and at Rutgers. Um, I want to thank our panelists, uh, panelists for taking the time tonight. I'm trying to think if there's kind of one, you know, let me actually um, call out our students one more time. <clears throat> They're really working for their, for their, uh, their money today. They're going to tell you uh, kind of the best thing that they did as, you know, that they've done at Rutgers that couldn't couldn't have done anywhere else. Does that put you guys on the spot? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, besides like what I've already mentioned, I would say a class that I took that was really interesting at Rutgers was it's a class called Functional Human Anatomy. And it was really cool because I took it as a freshman and we were able to use for the anatomy uh, lab section of it, we had a real uh, human cadaver that we were able to use so it was, it was honestly like incredible because, you know, like you see in an anatomy textbook, like, oh, you know, the blood vessels, you know, they're this color, the nerves are gray. Um, but then when you actually look at the body or like the brain is purple, but then when you look at the body, everything is just 
very gray. Everything is very hard to discern one another, whether it's a nerve or it's a vein. So I thought that was a really cool class. It was difficult, but it was very interesting. And I was able to take it here at Rutgers as a freshman, which I'm sure many other colleges wouldn't be able to give you the opportunity, maybe not even as a senior. So I thought that was very cool. Absolutely. Yeah, I also took that um, anatomy course and there are very few universities that have human cadavers. So that was um, very, very interesting. Um, as an exercise science major, I didn't expect myself to be like in a gym studio type of classroom um, so soon. But I, as a sophomore, took a class called exercise and relaxation. And that was in Lori's gym studio. So it's like a myriad um, dance studio. And it's pretty cool because you get to learn um, different forms of exercise and what they what conditions they benefit um, how to meditate was one um, class yoga like and I was just so like grateful to have that and learn at the same time um, and as for like organizations um, I am not like pre um, like medical <laughs> side I don't know how to categorize that sorry um, but I volunteered with uh, Colleges Against Cancer, which works with American Cancer Society. And every year they have Relay for Life. Um, so I absolutely love like volunteering for that every single year and the walkathons. And I just feel like Rutgers is so huge and has these connections that you find yourself in places that are just like massive and like a lot of people actually contributing to the community. And it's awesome. Great. Well, I'll even throw in that. Yeah. So I was a student at, um, it, used to, it used to be Cook College when I was there with SEDS, but my favorite course was a field ID of birds course I took, and I'd become an avid bird, bird watcher all my life, and it was from that course, so kind of a life experience going back to my time at Cook. Great. Well, thank you again to the panelists. Thank you for those of you joining us tonight. Um, again, please reach out if we can help you with anything, but we're gonna sign off for the night tonight. Um, but good luck to you as you continue thinking about colleges and eventually about hopefully health professions. Thanks very much.